So we'll get those chairs as you guys come. We got a video we want to show you just to show you one generation to maybe another that you might recognize. We are back to the show. Were these like the beats Play. back in the day? Music. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Oh, now that hit it, I heard it. We have contact. It looked too high-tech yeah. to be a walker. It's an MP3 player. Do you know what this is? A phone! An old tiny one! What is this? A CD. So tell me what you think that is. Like a computer. All right, it's like a computer, but with nothing cool. Oh, oh whoa, I see that. Oh, wait. It's so old. It's because it was the 80s and we were all dumb. <laughs> That's true. Can you take a selfie on your mom and dad's phone? Yes. Can you take a selfie with this? No. Let's see here. Y'all smile and get us a selfie. Smile. Say cheese. Cheese. Don't worry. You can't break it. It's a thousand years old. These things go in that hole. Okay, wait. No. Did you figure it out, Joe? Yeah, we got to slide That's it exactly into those funny. things. And oh. then we got to... I hear music. like a piano. These are like the pedals and then in there is all the gear. Hello? Hello? This phone does not work anymore. This is a cassette player. It's not a cassette player. Yes, it is. This is a common 1980s problem. You gotta t if you turn it backwards, it's going to roll it back the other way. So every time you turn it, you got to take your finger back out. Oh. Oh, I broke it. You totally broke Jeez. it. Jeez. Oh, oh, goodness. That's what you got. That's pretty great, huh? Think you can figure out how to make that thing go ding? Um, there's probably like an app. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> All right. I don't need 15 chairs up here. We don't, our stage isn't that big. Good grief. I was like, holy cow, what, how many are we bringing up here? All right, are you ready? As you saw that video, did that register to you who maybe the stuff was being handed to the little guys and they're like, I don't know what this is. Yeah. And uh, that generation is what's next door. But the generation you're going to hear from tonight is really what's the next generation from mine. You know, last time when we talked, uh, we talked about Generation X, which is mine. Uh, I talked about the millennials, but there's also another generation, as me and Anthony were talking, that I kind of forgot to mention, and it's Generation Z. That's the little guys next door. So as we talk, it's going to kind of be all of that together, but we're going to hear from part millennials and part of Z, maybe, to a degree, uh, of their thoughts, of their ideas, of what they um, feel like is with God, feel like is in the church, feel like what's relevant and what's not. So I can't preface anything they're going to say. I have no idea. Get ready for some, maybe some crazy answers that you're just like, what? Because that's kind of much how I feel all the time. So, so how are we doing? Are we good? Somebody grab that mic right there. We'll use that one, too. Here's this one. Oh, he handed it to you, Jaden. Right. Ooh. We'll try to uh, work the levels here in case we don't squeal on you or anything. But go ahead. Am I feeling good? Nervous. Are you nervous to be up here? Yeah. A little bit? Little bit? Going on. You don't have no idea what's going on? No, I kind of can. Kind of oh, here. Oh, okay. Well, you're not only here in front of the adults, you're in front of the entire world right now. You are live via YouTube. Don't prep your channel and have everybody subscribe to you. This isn't the time for that. Isaiah. What? Oh. I was like, who of us has a YouTube channel? So we're going to uh, talk about God. Dun, dun, dun. dun, dun. What is your, when you think of who God is or what God is, what does God mean to you? What does he look like? What does he smell like? What, what is God? Is he a unicorn with rainbows? Is he a big hairy guy on the throne with a beard? 
What is God to you? I don't care who goes first. You can just it can be a short answer and you can pass it on. I want to hear from all of you. So. Well, when I think of God why are you going first? Because I get pass me the mic and yeah. So when I think of God, I think of like I I don't really I can't really imagine like an image for him, you know. I just kinda see him as like this comforting type of thing for me. Like if I'm in distress or something I just go to this person. I don't know. I don't know honestly what he looks like at all. I can't understand it. But it looks um, a lot like me, doesn't he? Sure. I don't know. <laughs> but um, yeah, he just. It's like a voice, and I don't. I don't know how to explain the voice either. It's just something that I just hear, and it's like I could be like going through like the worst anxiety ever, and I just hear that that voice that's in, that I pray to, and it'll talk to me. It'll be like it'll be okay. And just stuff like that, and it just comforts me. It just, I'm like, whew, and it's just really nice. So, okay. Jaden's turn. Uh, when I think of God, I think out? of my Lord. He, it's like Isaiah said. It's hard to, it's hard for me to explain, but um, he he is the one that comforts me, and he's the one I can go to for anything. Like, if I'm too. Where you just tell it to my parents, I'll tell it to God, and he'll help me through it. It's like another, he's my father. Yeah, okay. Okay, before you answer, let's take your chairs and just scoot up just a hair so these guys can see you, because I'm sure they're looking at me. The help? Can you kind of see them now? Okay. Okay, so when I picture God, okay, everyone picture this. Picture the wisest person you can think of. Or maybe a wise person. When I think of someone wise, I think of someone, you know, with like a white beard, you know, kind of old. That's how I picture God. Like, <laughs> I just picture him like that. Like, he is really wise and smart. But also I think of him as like Mother Nature. He also has that nurturing side. And I can picture God as a woman too, like being a mother to me. Like, I can see, I can picture like the long hair, you know, the flower tiara and everything. Just having that down to earth side. So I can see God from both genders and what was this is that it that's it that's it, that's it right now. all right i got this one over here so, okay. all right well i don't really see god as a gender it's kind of just like a spirit it's kind of hard to explain that but he's the kind of person i wake up to every morning and i'm just so happy that he gave me another day of life and by the end of the day he's the number one person i want to talk to and it just is someone i can always talk to even when i'm not sure who else to talk to. And when I think about God, I just think about this warm, really warm feeling. It makes me feel comfortable and nice inside. Like, I don't worry anymore. I just feel calm, feel peace. Okay. All right, so does that make sense to you? How do you perceive God? How do you see him? This is the introduction to the fun stuff. Because everybody has a an idea of God. Everybody has what they think he can be like, how he speaks to them, like I heard. You know, the voice is something that is most recognized through who he is in the earth anyway, because that's how this earth was established. So you're hearing from uh, today's generation who's in church for the most part. But how many of you guys have friends who aren't in church? So what about those guys? Here's the next question. If God, if you can relate to God this way, why do you think your friends or people who aren't in church don't care anything about God, why do you think that they don't care? Why is church not important to them? I'll go first. Okay. Um, well, to me, God is someone I can just talk to and to them. Talking to something that they think is not there and is not going to answer back is just something they just don't want to do. There's, they think there's no point in it. So it's like stupid to them, you think? I've been told that. Okay. I'll go next. Okay, so I can, I, as I see God, I see him as like the protector and all those attributes. But when my friends see them, they see them like, oh, well, that's my mom and dad that I have on this earth. They can't picture the highest superior that there is which is God they can't picture that or let alone connect because they don't have that connection they don't understand 
And so for me to say, oh, I like, I'm speaking to God, I pray to God, they're like, why would you pray to someone who you can't see? Like, it's like, it's hard to imagine and hard to understand. And I can see that from that perspective too. But that's why a lot of this generation doesn't really believe in God because why believe something you can't see? That's good. Why well, believe in something you can't see? It's the very question we are commanded to walk by, right? The very thing we walk by faith and not by those things that we can see. So if the unbelieving world immediately goes there first to say, well, why are you doing it if you can't prove it? You know, if you can't prove God. But what's the only tangible presence we can prove God with from the church to the world? Yeah, what God's done in your life, right? And obviously the power of God, you know, when that flows and somebody is healed or that withered hand is restored, it's pretty hard to deny that God's not real. You know, you can't, you can't go down that road anymore. Um, but if you live in a place or maybe live in a land that doesn't see that as much, it's a lot easier to deny God to say, well, yeah, you say he's real, but there's nothing different in your life. You know, I, yeah, you might go to church on a Wednesday night, but I don't see Jesus beside you. And you can say, well, I feel the Holy Spirit here, but that just might be the wind. So, you know. Maybe that um, tangible presence is a factor that this generation is needing and kind of clamoring for to find out truth. You know, you don't go drive a car that you can't see, right? Feels like we pay bills and IRS payments to people we don't see, so I'm not sure where that goes. But, you know, everything else, you, you kind of have to have it in front of you. So maybe, maybe there's a piece to that. All right, fellas, what's your thoughts? Why do people not care about God? Well, sometimes it's just they don't want to. They don't want to because they think as God as being someone that you have to follow all these rules, and it's just taking away what they want, and they don't want to give it up. Okay, yeah, that's good. Like, kind of how Macy said, they, they focus a lot on family, but... A lot of the friends that I have that aren't Christians and stuff, they don't have a connection with their family. And so they don't know what it's like to have a father or a mother, however you want to picture God. <laughs> but um, like, I think that the reason why they don't want to be in that like, connection with God is they don't, want to ha they don't want to have a relationship that, like, they don't want to have a relationship like that, or they don't understand that I can have a relationship with a dad, even if I don't have a relationship with my real dad. I don't know. I might not know where he is or some, something like that. Like, I know some of my friends that they don't even know where their dad is. And it's it's pretty sad to me. But they, I don't think they just, I just don't think that they, they can understand that. And that they can't understand that just because their family's been split up or there's been stuff that's happened to them, that doesn't mean that there's a God that loves them and wants to take care of them and comfort them. Okay. Yeah. So if broken homes are a part of that factor, obviously, uh, and we know that coming to God and coming to church brings stability in life, right? You know, you kind of you can go through a day and be like, "Gosh, this day stinks," but when I get to church, it seems better, or at least I've got an hour escape from those things. I wonder if we know the benefits of what God is here, or maybe God in our life, maybe not even just here, because we know that God's outside of here. What's the, what do you guys think is the bigger issue to telling people that? Maybe maybe sharing your, your witness or your testimony with them. Like, how do you relate God to people if you would do that? Well, if your testimony has something that's going on in their life, at that moment, you can make a connection there. Say, yeah, that happened to me, and I know what you're going through. But, like, if you give that to God, you can solve that problem. Do you think they'd go for it? Sometimes. Sometimes. You want to go? 
Okay, so I want to add on to what Jaden said. If you're in that place where you have like issues and everything, you're going to look for an answer. You're going to seek for an answer. And if you're really trying to seek, then anything's a possibility for you, including God. So people may be like, hey, I'm going to try this, you know, and if they try it, great. But if they don't, you know, there's always going to be someone in their life to say, hey, I've been through this situation too. So it's going to add on to be like, oh, this is a possibility because if many other people are doing this and their lives are more happy and cheerful, then why can't mine be? So I feel like that's when they're going to be like, let me try this out and see how it is. And you mentioned broken homes and how that plays a factor. Anytime we walk into this church, we say, one visit and you're a part of our family already. Like everyone in this church is loving and that's what churches are, they're love. So whenever someone steps in a foot into this church, they're already feeling accepted too, showing the presence of God, but from us to them by acceptance and love. I think what, despite what teenagers may tell themselves, they personally want something to hope in, something to have faith in, something to go to for comfort. And I think that when we share testimonies and try to relate to them, that they see that there is something to hope in, that there is something that they can trust in, something that they can find peace in, something that maybe will work for them too. If it worked for one of us, what, may, what will stop it from helping them too? Okay. These are nice, great, spiritual, Anthony-prepped answers. <laughs> um, you guys are doing great. I want to read a scripture. This is Matthew 11, or Mark 11, 27. Jesus gets questioned by authority. Jesus gets questioned by the religious leaders of the day. And if you look at Jesus' life as we're talking about generations, thoughts from one generation to maybe another, they didn't like Jesus, not just because he operated in the power of God, but because he was already beginning to buck the system. He was already beginning to do things that weren't typical in the church, weren't typical in what they were used to seeing and what they had grown up with. And so they didn't like him. And this is the immediate question they ask him. Verse 27, it says, And when they came again to Jerusalem, and as he was walking in the temple, the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders came to him, and they said to him, by what authority are you doing these things? Who gave you this authority to do all these things? And Jesus answered and said to them, I'll also ask you a question. And then you answer me, and I'll tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or from men? Answer me. So he immediately puts something back on them that they're already contending with as well. They already don't like John either because he's still in attention. Jesus comes in. They don't like him, so he immediately throws the other, the other dice. Verse 31 says, And they reason among themselves, saying, Well, if we say from heaven, then he'll say, Well, then why didn't you believe in him? But if we say from men, because they feared the people, for all counted John to have been a prophet indeed. And isn't it just like the, the carnal church, the carnal Christian, to fear others and the, the opinion of man more than what God says. So they're stuck. Verse 33 says, and so they answered and said to Jesus, we don't know. And Jesus answered and said to them, well, then neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. See, this is the one thing that I, I see in generations that is always at play, is authority. You know, when you're a younger teenager, one of the things, or, or a young person, uh, one of the things that you have to always watch out, or they'll always say about teenagers is, well, you're you're just rebelling against authority. You're just say you're just doing it because your parents said not to do it. You know, you. I tell my boys on the weekends, I'll go upstairs and go to bed, and I'll tell them, all right, don't stay up late. I'm going to bed. Now, do you think they go to bed right then? The moment dad goes upstairs, they know dad ain't coming back downstairs. I ain't going back down them stairs. I'm done. I'm there for the night. But if I tell them, now don't stay up late, you think they're like, okay, what time is it right now? Okay, it's 8.06. So, uh, okay, guys, we're just going to, I mean, Isaiah's telling Blake and Grayson, okay, we're just going to stay up for 15 more minutes and we're going to go to bed because dad said. Do you think that's what they're doing? Heck no. Man, they're probably up till midnight. I have no idea. I'm already asleep. 
All I know is if the house is on fire and I wake up, oh, somebody's going to be in trouble. <laughs> but the, the, the obvious place of rebellion has always been there. They thought Jesus was rebelling in a sense against them because he was doing things different than what they had. So as you guys spoke about, you know, giving these nice, good answers about how we need to turn to God. If we turn to God, things happen and, and it'll get better. And our friends, if they would just see that. Here's the next more in your face question. Why don't your friends come to church with you? All of them, not just the happy-go-lucky Christian ones. All those weird ones that don't know Jesus. How come they don't come to church with you? I think that um, the reason why they don't come to church is, A, they probably think it's boring. <laughs> like, I, I know sometimes even all, like, I'll try not to fall asleep and I'll be like, huh? Now we're getting yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Now um, we're getting somewhere. <laughs> yeah. I, part of it is that, and also I feel like part of it is they, they just feel uncomfortable about it. I, I would feel uncomfortable when they talk about what they like and that's not very good. You know, they talk about stuff that not exactly good to be talking about and yeah. I feel uncomfortable and they probably feel uncomfortable by the way that we talk and stuff because we're Christians. We sound, I sound like we're talking about like another species or something. But <laughs> um, I just think that they, if they can get in uh, in here and like we can accept, oh, the, and they can find out, oh, it's not as bad as what I thought. It's I don't feel awkward. I don't feel like. Oh yeah, these people are judging me the whole time. That's a big thing. People are always like, "Don't judge me," because they're all, they're afraid to be judged and they're afraid of what other people think of them. And if they could just come in and understand, I'm not going to judge you for who you are. I'm you're here and I'm here to get right with God, because that's what we're here for. We're not here to, um, we're not here to. How do I want to say that? We're not here to look good and kind of and be like oh yeah I'm better than you all all these little people out here that don't go to church I'm I'm better than them and I show off my little check and everything and put it in the offering plate that's not how it works here we come here and we worship together and we like hang out and we listen to my dad talk <laughs> and <laughs> but um it's we we're all kind of here like as as a family we don't judge each other but we're in a way we're just a big family that love each other. We don't. We're not jerks to each other. Like if you were out out of school, people are jerks. We're not going to be jerks here. And if you are, you'll get in trouble. But um, yeah, that's all I got. Okay. So I know all three of you will agree with that answer. That if you can just get them in here, it'll change, right? We we say that too. Just try once. And if you don't like Lifeway after one time, then don't don't come back. We're not going to force you. But you said something key right there that I want to hear from some of the rest of you. You said church is boring. What's boring about church to your generation? Like, what's boring? Yeah, like, give me some details. Don't give me a Christian answer. I want to know. I'll answer this question. Inquiring minds, we want to know. What's boring? When you come here, I know you come here to, because you maybe kind of have to, you know, you endure it, but you like it because it's family and we love you. But what's, what's boring about church? I feel like people, when they come into a church, when they think about listening to the preacher, they think of something that's not going to be interesting, something that they won't need in life, that they're just going to go in, come out, and be like, well, that was a waste of my time. Because that's right. how a lot of teenagers are when they go to school. They're like, why do I even go to school? All I do is sit there, and then I wait for the bell to ring, and then I leave. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So, right. like, when they go to church, what they think about is, like, there's a bunch of, okay, let me think. Um, I brought a friend to church during the summer, and I asked him what he thought about church, and he said, um, it's kind of odd because you guys are all about being free and kind of like the way we worship, he thought it was weird because the way he grew up was the band would play, and then everybody would just stand there and sing the songs, and then when it was done, everyone would sit down and just listen to the preacher and leave. And he said that it was just a daily routine. It was like going to school. We didn't do anything fun. Okay. And so I think what teenagers think about church is that it's just a place where they come to that they don't have to come if they don't want to, just like school. Okay. Yeah, that's good. 
a lot of people think it's church is boring. One, because, like, well, we're not always on, we're always on our phones, our generation. And here, we're, we're not really. We're all listening to Dallas. And to me, sometimes that gets boring. Uh, Pastor Dallas. Pastor Dallas. Don't, Sorry. Don't pastor me. It's too late. You've already stepped in the hole. <laughs> we still love you. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about that. We're getting somewhere. It's taking a little bit, but we're getting somewhere. So if this format of church is boring, what would you what would you like to see? What would be interesting to you in church? Well, I mean, you could have the service the way you'd like. Now this is cool. <laughs> Now, this is church. What would it be? Well, what I think is interesting is like, I mean, a man got eaten by a whale. A guy resurrected. A donkey talked to a person. Like, snakes talked to women. Like, that stuff piques your interest. When you think of church, you think of the typical message, Jesus loves you. Come to Jesus. And that's what people see church as. But there's so much more stuff to the Bible than just Jesus loves you. And so that's what I find interesting. So I would talk about all the mysteries, be like, yo, listen what happened here, you know? <laughs> like, all that cool stuff, you know? <laughs> And I, I would have like, every okay, so there's a whole bunch of different music styles too. And when people think of church music, they think of, holy Lord, the whole, like, they think of that. They don't think of like guitars and everything, but we have that upbeat music too. So, I mean, keep that there. Yeah, but okay, yeah. You like that. Okay. You like that. Right. You know, I don't know if it's just because like, I feel like, I'm still an eight-year-old, but like Me too. Pastor, Dave, <laughs> Pastor David, the way he did church, like I still remember it, it was pretty cool. Like I liked how we took like little breaks and like played games and stuff. <laughs> and like, yeah, yeah, like they, the games are awesome. Like I just, I still remember like getting super frustrated because I lost over a game where I shot rubber bands at cards for 30 seconds. And it was... It was awesome, and like we'd get candy, and we'd ha we'd have like a most awesome kid award, stuff like that. And <laughs> but I just think it'd be cool if we could kind of not act like we're grown ups, you know? We could we could act like we're little kids again, <laughs> you know? I just I just think it'd be cool. So All right. yeah, yeah, that works. Okay. So keep the cool music. Have games and candy. <laughs> Take breaks often. <laughs> yeah, evidently I don't need to preach because that, that's boring. So that works. That frees me up a lot. Well, it's not really you're boring. No, it's, no. You're not. No. You're not. You're not boring. It's. I. I actually love it when you tell jokes. It's hilarious. But. Um, no. No. Like, there's, there's parts of church that I, I actually like. Well, actually, I like a lot of church, but <laughs> I know I'm digging my own grave right now. But, <laughs> like, there's, like, whenever you, whenever you say jokes and stuff and keep it lighthearted, like, a lot of times we'll get into, like, serious conversations, and it kind of creeps me out, you know? Like, I don't want to be, I don't want to be in a deep conversation and be like, oh, I don't know what to say, and, like, be all freaked out. And, like, if I could... If, if we could kind of keep it, like, lighthearted, but still have the times where we know, okay, this is a serious time. We need to focus. Like, it'd be really cool. No? Okay. So, I'm done. I'm done for sure now. <laughs> All right. So, here's a question that adults would like to know. Why are you on your phones all the time? Yeah, I will answer this. I'm usually I'm not on my phone all the time anymore. No, after the no. after, because I can, because I used to be that way. After the fast, I like let go of my phone a lot more than I usually do. Well, did I was on my phone all the time. Whenever I got bored, that was the first thing I went to because we grow up in a generation where we learn what we get new phones all the time. Like technology advances every year, and so you learn. Oh, I want this. I want this, and so you learn about all these cool new things, and so. Whenever you get bored, the first thing you want to do is go to your phone. And that goes back to church. People, if they don't get interesting, interested in something off the bat, they'll go straight to their phones. Yeah. So then church kind of gets modeled in a place to where we have to always be trying to keep your attention, keep you on the hook, so that you'll 
stay engaged. I think that's how teachers feel at school, too. Teachers feel that way? Oh, no. So what do you think drives your generation to be that way? Because, like, the guy who died today, everybody know who Billy Graham is up here? Yeah. Right. I know you know. So Billy Graham died today. He comes from a generation, and some of you from that generation can maybe speak to this a little bit. He comes from a generation where black and white TV was the norm. There was no phones except maybe one in the house, one in the hotel room, and they didn't have all that. So do you think people that are on the, maybe even the older side than where I am, do you think that they're still relevant today? Are they just boring and old and have hair growing out of their ears? What's your thoughts with the old people? Jane. The old people are pretty cool. Okay. They have they have a bunch of stories to tell. Yeah, and get lots of information that'll help you in life. But what's the real answer? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm get I'm getting there. Okay. So like the old people have been through a lot more, and they can help you, you through. Like this term? You like this term, Bob? The elders. The old people. The old people. Call them old people. I know. I just. It's funnier when you say. The elders. Oh, there you go. (laughs) Okay, Jada, just go. Well, they. That like, so I'm trying to get back into a Bible study with a preacher that we had in Huguenin, and he's an older guy, but like to me, the older people. (laughs) No, like they're good with teaching you. And helping you with, like, in the Bible, like, if you're confused on, like, what a verse says, they're, like, they know it. They're wise. They are wise. Okay. Very wise. Okay. You could wait to end it. They have stuff happening in their lifetime whenever they were teens that didn't happen in our lifetime that connects us, like, such as our phones. We have our phones in our lifetime that they didn't have in theirs. So we can be like, oh, I'll show you what this does and this. And it's like trading information, like trading secrets. And they'll be like, back in my time, we didn't do this. We had other options. So, like, they tell you, like, their side. And it's just really cool seeing, like, the history and, like, how things have evolved. Like, in this picture right here, I love this picture, though. Who do you think's the... Younger adult. Probably the guy on the left. The the guy on the left? The guy says the whole. Why? Because his haircut is not as spiky. Okay, so who do you think? You think the spiky guy is the old guy or the kid? He's the old guy trying to be young. <laughs> okay. But like, in this picture, I didn't, I didn't see it like that. I saw... The guy on the right being the kid, and the guy on the left being the adult. But what I think is really interesting is the only thing that separates us is appearance and basically technology, like stuff that advances. So elders are relevant to uh, our lives, our daily lifestyles. Like my my grandma and my great grandma, like they're essential to me. Like I gotta have them. Like I don't know what I'd do without them. They provide basically the foundation of your family and who doesn't want to know about their history and all that yeah, all that yeah yeah <laughs> okay um <laughs> move your mic um <laughs> what's up with the old people the old people what about the old people the old people well i don't really I don't really think that old people are like a bad thing or it's like they're like something that like keep us keep us like there's not like a huge gap that I feel like is like pushing us away because like me and my parents are like sometimes I don't even realize I don't I forget the fact that my dad is older than 20 like he acts like he acts like he's like an 18 year old and it's like whoa like what do you mean older than 20 is 20 old no no I'm just saying like what's, what's an old age 85. 85 is we don't want to dig our 58. 58. Okay. Yeah, that's an old age. That's still pretty young. That's pretty young. I think <laughs> but, like, I know, I know that whenever I, whenever I am, even if I'm not even asking for an opinion, 
I'm going to get an opinion that I know is going to be better than what I think. And it's going to be smarter than what I think. Because I could, I could think something and think, oh, yeah, this is the smartest idea in the world. And it's not at all. And, and my mom would be like, Isaiah, do not do that. That's stupid. And, yeah, it's, it, it's like they're like a mirror that will give you the most accurate opinion and tell you exactly what you need to work on, you know. And it's, and, and it's in a good way. It's not, it's not a bad way like, oh, yeah, you need to do this and this and this. It's like... It's a good thing, and it pro it shows me, okay, I'm doing bad in this area. I need to work on this, and that's how I think God is too. And just kind of like as a way to reflect, my God is like how my parents are, and that's a good thing. I think that my parents are reflecting how God is in the way that they show me what I'm, what's wrong, and they show me what I need to work on, and I'm like, okay, well then help me with this. And it's just, it's really good for me. I feel like... I feel like they sh they give me a more wider knowledge than what I could get on my own without Google, and <laughs> it's it's pretty awesome. Without Google. Okay, I didn't get to answer this old people question. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what you really consider old, because my whole life I always hang out with the adults, so I don't really know what you would consider old. Um, I wouldn't consider my parents old, not for a fact, no. I might joke around with my mom and call her old lady and ask her if she knew Jesus, but no. <laughs> <laughs> no, my parents look like teenagers all the time, yeah. all the time. Mm -hmm. But I think that there's nothing wrong with old people. Like, I always, I love talking to my grandparents. They're really cool. I like talking to my older cousins and I love talking to my parents. They're my best friends. They go, I go to them for everything. I talk to them about everything. And I joke around with them literally about everything. So I don't know if you guys consider your parents old because they're, those guys are my best friends. No, they're literally my best friends. Like, there's nothing my mom does not know. <laughs> no. I can say that's probably not the norm with We're, a lot of kids. It's really not. Yeah. It's really sad, too. But I mean, it's OK. <laughs> It's really sad that your parents are your best friends? Or? Well, I mean, most teenagers in my generation, their friends are their best friends, and a lot of them rebel against their parents. And my mom is like, I talk to her about everything. I get lectured every morning, every night before I go to bed. <laughs> and my dad's more of the chill dude who just wants to have fun. I was going to have the fun one in the family. Yeah, and then, like, me and my mom do disagree about some things, but, I mean, it's... I usually have the better opinion, so it's okay. Spoken <laughs> <laughs> like a true teenager. <laughs> Can I add something real quick? Yeah. This is how you bond in a minute or less. Hey, Miss Donna, I have a question for you. What does the word salty mean? What does the word salty mean? Okay, so that's, you see the difference there? Okay. Okay, so she sees that. But in our generation, we think of salty as like, wow, you're just being like... You're mad. Yeah, like sassy. Salty is what we call you. Salty, like you're all harsh with your words and everything. All right. So, Donna, yeah. you learned new thing today. I learned something new, too. And so that's under a minute. And that's... Oh, that, that's a bonding bond experience. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Because in my generation, if, you, if somebody said that you were salty, that meant you were good. You're good at something. Like that team is salty. What? It means they're good at basketball. They're a state driven team. Whoa. Doesn't mean they're mad or they're angry. Learn something new every day. I'm telling you. <laughs> what what's your term for if some something's cool? Stud. Stud? Yeah. Oh yeah. Or lit. Lit. Okay, yeah, I've heard that a yeah, lit. <laughs> it's Gucci, yeah. Gucci. <laughs> Gucci. Gucci, yeah, I've heard that. Gucci is a clothing line that's like really expensive. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's why it's good. That's why it's cool. Yeah. It's that. Yeah, pretty much. <clears throat> All right. We're, we're making some progress here. Um, if you could add anything to your youth group church side, because this is your church when you need it to be. <laughs>
but when you dismiss and go next door or you have Sunday nights in here, if you could add something to the youth group to make it viable or maybe more attractive to, there you go, more attractive to um, your friends, what would that be? Like what speaks to your generation Kind of like what we talked about a little bit earlier with making church cool or lit or whatever you say. But if you could add one thing to the youth group, what would that be? How could we as the adults help you in that area? I think that if if we wanted to go off of what I wanted, it would probably be longer worship. But that's not what other other people want, like people that don't go to church. Longer worship? Yeah, because I like worship. Don't you worship for like 45 minutes anyway? Yeah. Okay. But, Just make sure. Yeah, but like um, I think that like a lot of kids, I, a lot of my friends and stuff, and he he knows this and he knows this, Fortnite. Like, like everyone loves Fortnite. And so <laughs> if you could add like a PlayStation or maybe even a basketball goal, like basketball goals are pretty cool. And I was I was sad I was pretty sad when we took out the thing, but then we got then we got like PlayStations and stuff, and so it's kind of worth it. But just kind of stuff that would appeal more to um, like what teenagers like, like video games or basketball or phone chargers. I don't know, but <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, charging, need, stations. charging station. We need right charging there. station and along one the every altar. single corner. So you come down to pray and you kneel, but you're really charging your phone. Like, <laughs> yeah. I would know. He'd like that. Yeah, it's wonderful. Gosh, the teenagers just love God. Why Amen. Are their screens on. You know whenever everyone's like, who's not on their phone because their phone's up on the That's altar. That's true. Yeah, yeah, their phone's at the altar. Okay. What's something else you would you could add to the youth group? Games. Games. I yeah. Everyone loves a game, whether it's dodgeball or other games or minute to win it games. Like right now, I love trivia crack. So, and that's an old game. Do you, you know what trivia crack is? I know what crack is. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's like Bible trivia, but. A whole bunch of different categories. Cool. Like, I think that would be cool if we had like Bible trivia's every now and then, or just games that everyone can bond with. Like, that's sportsmanship. So, like, J- if I threw a ball at Jaden's face, we're gonna laugh about it. We're not gonna yeah, be we're... like, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Trevor threw a ball at Mom's face. I laughed about that's it. Still funny. That's I laughed still about funny. it, you and you know what? That, that helped us grow. <laughs> Uh, Anel, Anel and Mom, and what was it, Jay and Hiram, they did those tournaments, like, with teams and everything. Those were fun. And I think that's what kids love. They love to be active, and anytime they get a chance, you know, well, most kids love to get active. And so anytime they have that chance, like, that's, that's a go-getter. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good. So games and fun, and video yes. games, and basketball, and... Gucci. Gucci. Well, what I was going to say was more worship. More worship? Not video games, but games. Games? Yeah. Worship and games. But other than that, just youth itself was fun. Like, just doing worship and then going right into the service, that's like, like, Pastor Anthony just makes it fun. (laughs) Good answer. Good answer. Because have, have you noticed within this talk of it with church, there's not one thing mentioned about preaching. I haven't heard longer sermons, Pastor. Longer messages. It's, but it, it shows the heart. Of, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. It just shows the heart of where teenagers are today, that they want to be entertained. They wanna, we we want to have stuff. Keep our attention. Keep our interest. Keep us going to where we can stay hooked up and stay connected. And we're all full of ADD. They're all ADD because because of that. So the bigger place of this, besides just hearing from them, is kind of what we said last time we were together, that the church culture is changing. We can obviously see the traditional ways we do church is no longer really relevant to this next generation. 
they endure it. They'll go through it because they're here. And they kind of enjoy it once they're in here. But not really. You know, so it kind of begs us as maybe the older ones that are in here. What, what do we do as that group to, I don't know necessarily to adjust church to make it fit so the next generation gets raised up? Because obviously they need our wisdom, right? That's what they said. We want to hear from you because you've got stuff to say. But the way you do it in here is boring to us. So how does that make you feel? Is it kind of awkward? Is it okay? Do you think it's boring too? And I'm like, I'm ready for some games and ADHD dodgeball and everything else. <laughs> dodgeball. I mean, this was a gym before it was a sanctuary. We can go back to it. Yeah, right? it was. It was full court. Yeah. Full court yeah. basketball. That's cool. Yeah. But it, it just kind of gives you a, a quick snapshot in the evening of where their, where their minds are. And it's not even so much just them because, you know, we know that millennials are a little different than those that aren't quite as connected to technology. And technology is a big thing. And you heard that. We immediately go to that when we're bored. So they don't know how to, they don't know how to uh, sit there in their own thoughts. They don't know how to, as I tell my boys when we go to Amarillo or going across the state to see our parents, stare out the window and look at God's movie. They're like, that's boring. I've already seen, Blake says, I've already seen this movie. <laughs> I'm like, that's so funny. <laughs> this is a rerun, Dad. Give me a tablet or something. Put a movie in. And so the, the place of living it, kind of in the moment as we know it doesn't appeal to them because they've got so much available right here. They can do everything from here and maybe even prefer that more than, than anything. I mean, do you prefer phones over tablets or laptops or big screen TVs? Like, what's your technology of choice? I like phones. It's like, it's like portable and you don't have to carry it around in a, lap, no, in a like bag or something. But like, yeah, it's like convenient and also like for my my phone is like the perfect size for me. Like I can, it's like just the right size screen and stuff, and so I can play video games on it. And yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay, <laughs> phones for you. What do you say? Computer. Computer. What for? For gaming? Not just that. There's just a lot more things you can do on a computer. Okay. I like computers more too. I don't know. I just I like computers. the feel of it. The keys, and then you like keys, yeah. when you want to watch a movie, just the screen is way bigger than a little phone that you have to carry around all day. Okay. Yeah, use your eyesight. Don't oh, lose your true. eyesight. Day. That's yeah, because you keep your computer a little farther than your phone, where you have it like right here. Okay. I prefer a phone. It's more easy to carry, and it's more convenient. Okay, so let's take a poll in here for everybody else. How many of you? prefer technology cell phones prefer to carry those use those as opposed to a TV laptop tablet how many of you like tablets want to go up the train how many of you like computers laptops or desktops how many of you like TV <laughs> how many of you like none of it about about a, a book with Ooh, paper pages yeah. That's all about audio. That's my next question. How many of you like audio books because you're too lazy to read? All right. Yay. Let's just hear it all. Let's let somebody read it to me. Sounds like a book. All right. Okay. Well, I think we've got a good conversation started. Um, we've heard a few things. We just don't have time to go into. I don't know what's going on back there. I'm gonna fire whoever's doing that. Okay, we have a new opening for a child, a children's pastor now. <laughs> you know, there, there's something about the generations, whether it's the old guy on your left or the young guy on your right on the screen. <clears throat> and. The bigger part and the bigger question is, is that we've got to find a way or, or maybe just continue in our ways to connect there. Because regardless of whether we want to acknowledge it or know it or not, um, the church is changing. And I really feel like, and, and I prophesied this a little while back, that when Billy Graham passes, the world will shift. 
things will change. He's some of the last of the old guard, some of the last of the old gatekeepers in the earth that, that did it in that way. His day was tent revivals and crusades. I mean, his last big crusade I think I read today was in 2004 or six or somewhere in there at uh, the six in the baseball stadium, packed it out. And that was his last big one that he did. But we know that big church, you know, giant mega church, isn't as appealing to people because I've heard that more than anything. If I'm in a big church, I'm just a number. I'm not important. And I can slip in and slip out, and nobody would know any different. And to some degree, I think they're right if they want to stay incognito. But in a lot of other ways, you can stay incognito in a little church, too. It's a little harder because we can see you a little easier. But this generation, this isn't as appealing. It is to a degree, but it's not what they're running to. They're running to entertainment. You know, in my day, back in my day, we had arcades. So you went to the arcade with a pocket full of quarters. And that was where the weekend was spent, you know, if, if you had them. Um, otherwise, it was roller skating. You know what roller skating is? It was dragging main. You know what that is? Dragging main. You get in your car. When you, when you get a car, if you get a car, it's something else. You drive up and down the street and just drive. Like yeah, cruising. Yeah, okay. So it's that kind of stuff. But a lot of what what I see in people is people they, people still cruise. They still roller skate. They still go to movies. They just do it all right here. And they watch YouTube videos about it. Virtual reality. Or virtual reality. Um, augmented reality. They, they do it, but they do it in a different fashion. And the question is, how do we as a generation who maybe grew up with part of that but doesn't have it all the way, how do you relate to that? How do we go forward in that conversation? Because there's a whole lot more that's going to come in the future. Literally, at the end of this year, we'll have a whole new stage set before us through this company right here, the cell phone companies. 5G is getting ready to be released in Dallas, Texas. Just saw it today, uh, this month. So it's going to be, we're going to move up a whole other speed level. You know, how much faster do we need to go? I don't know. But we're going to keep going, I guess, until we can have it in our heads or something, you know. So, so the world is changing on that regard. But I think in reality, it's no different than any other generation moving from them growing up to their parents before them. Everything has changed. You know, everything, oh, we didn't have that when we were kids. And I don't know if that's good or not. Because we saw that in Ecclesiastes. It's all said, nothing's new under the sun. Doesn't matter how new you think it is, it's already happened in the previous generations. You've just you've come so far forward that you, you forgot and you don't know what it is, but it seems new to you. And so what they're experiencing and going through isn't all that new from generation to generation. But in our lifetime, when you grow up and see like Billy Graham, I saw he was born in nineteen eighteen. Can you imagine all the things he's seen in his 99 years of life? Going from that log cabin home, pretty much, that two bedroom home that was so basic, to having a worldwide organization and packing out baseball stadiums, being literally around the world, bringing millions of people to Christ. I mean, what are we going to see in our lifetime? You know, we, you, where, whenever you were born, and whatever you had growing up, where's it going to be whenever you're 60 and 70 and 80 and 90? Some of you get there for others. What's it going to be when you look back at your life and go, man, I remember when I was this age and, I, and what we had. And now look at what we have. You know, So the world is going to be ever changing. But the question is, are the churches having these kind of conversations that we're willing to, number one, give this next generation a voice? Give them a whole evening to speak. You know, how many times has that happened in here since we've pastored? Never. It's never happened. Not where I've given you the whole evening. I give you something to say or maybe a song or something. But I'm like, okay, go away. Go away. But I realize, too, as I'm getting a little closer to 40, and it's not even old. 40 is the new 20. Did you know that? 
Yeah, it is. 40's not old, is it? No. <laughs> yes, it's old. Now, how many think 40's old? How many of you don't think 40's old? Yeah, that means you're over 40. So. <laughs> that means you've passed that with flying colors. You're like, I'm just as young as I used to be. Just can't get up quite as quick anymore. <laughs> so there's change. There's change that's coming in the church. And, you know, and Anthony's already talking about it with these guys. We're talking about it. Um, the little guys, they just talk about everything. So who knows what, where they're at. But they're, in reality, they're the ones who are going to be coming up and leading the church in that next realm. These guys will take it over from us. But, and we're getting ready to get it handed over from the baby boomer generation, literally, literally in our movement, in Four Squares movement, uh, Glenn Burris is literally transitioning out this year. And he's passing it to a younger generation. He's passing the baton. Um, our district supervisor is from that very realm. She, a woman, is probably in her early, maybe 40. She might be 40. Uh, maybe late 30s, I don't know, not real sure, but she's right around our age. You know, so the baton is getting passed, just like it gets passed every, every generation. But if we don't have conversations with these guys to say, you know, yeah, we might still feel like we're young, but we're not getting everything that they're getting, and they're not going to be getting everything the younger guys across the yard are going to be getting. They're going to be the old guys to them one day. How is the church going to stay relevant to where... We're not, they're not saying, well, I didn't invite my friends, but it's boring. You know, I don't want Lifeway to be doing the same type of church 30 and 40 years from now that we're doing right now. And we're progressive. We're contemporary here. You know, we're not your typical liturgical church, you know, with high church and robes. We could be. I don't mind that stuff at all. It's kind of cool. But would that really speak to the ones that are coming up? Um, but like I said, there's a place for, if you've grown up in this, there's a place for that too. But don't be surprised that if the generation isn't like, oh, okay, yeah, we're going to bring everybody in. We're going to change the world through the church if they stay out of the church and do church in the schoolyard, do church in the street, do church at home, do church online. Uh, that's why Life Church is so popular like it is because online speaks to people. We've kicked that conversation around of starting satellite campuses in Lifeway all around. Every, every town around here could easily have a satellite campus. Because if you live in the town, guess who the pastor is? You are. We'll set it up, we'll stream it live, and you can speak. You know, just like they're getting to speak. Uh, so things, things are changing in that realm. But the question is, are we going to be able and willing to adapt in that, but yet still keep the identity of who we are? Because we don't want to just throw everything we are away and like, well, okay, we're the old guys and we don't matter anymore. Because you do. You know, we still have a voice and a place too. And that's one thing that I see in older generations is it's easy to feel left behind, left out. You know, well, you don't matter no more. You're not fast anymore. You don't do things right. Your, your knees creak when you go down the stairs, you know, so just go away. You know, you, you forget things. Well, this generation forgets more than you probably do because they, they can't keep attention more than three minutes. So, you know, the, everybody can work with each other in this and you don't have to feel like you're left out. But it's a real conversation that I think we're going to have. And tonight's not going to be all of it. We just can't fix everything in one night. Um, but it can at least get the ball rolling. It can at least let us know that we're willing to talk. We're willing to listen to them. And if you have kiddos in this realm, talk to them. Let them talk to you where they're not feeling like, you know, well, if I come and talk to you, all you're going to do is tell me all the things I'm doing wrong. You know, we all know what that's like as younger well, my parents just always got on to me, so I didn't really want to tell them anything. I just shut down and go in my room. Um, let them have a voice there. Or maybe if there's kids in the, in the church that you see and they don't have a dad or a mom or a parent or, or they're just kind of down. And maybe you don't have kids here anymore. They can, they can draw from that. They can draw from you. Go find them. Put your arm around them. You know, let's just, let's just love like Jesus said and see where he takes us. Amen. You guys got any other words for tonight? Can I tell you guys a joke? Um, 
Yes. Well, uh, I've heard your jokes. But let's hear it anyway. Why doesn't the queen weigh with this hand? Because it's my hand. Oh, <laughs> good lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a millennial one more. joke right one there. More. Uh, have you guys heard of the Matter Baby? No. Trevor, have you heard of it? <laughs> What's the Matter Baby? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You fell for it. You fell for it. Hey, man. All right. <laughs> See, I told you you couldn't plan on anything they're going to say because you have no idea. But it's been good conversation, hasn't it? It's, it's getting things out there. And well, and this wasn't that scary, was it, to speak once you kind of got into it? You know, try to make it as informal. So maybe a next round, if we can do this again, we'll get some more teenagers up here. Maybe we can get you up here. I'd like to hear from the generation who is the baby boomer generation because you're, you're above me. Um, the what's the generation after the baby boomers? No, before that. Oh, before I mean, sorry. Is it the greatest generation? The greatest one? Okay, yeah. I don't think we have any of those, but uh, maybe we can get a panel to hear that. Hear from the wisdom side of the church, as we can say, and uh, and hear your thoughts with with God, with church, with life, with where you've been. Because if there's one thing in that, it's the cool stories we can tell. Amen? It's the stuff that we've been through. And be like, man, you know, when I was your age, I always hated those stories from my parents because I'm like, oh, great, here we go again. And I tell them all the time. So I'm like, well, where did that come from? But it, it, it's also good for them because they get to hear some experience that you've had in life and go, you know what, maybe you do know some things. Maybe you old people aren't that bad after all. So I think we're on a good path and we'll uh, continue this as we go. Amen? Stand up with us.